So now we're going to talk about hail forecasts, data, and um, wind, as well as car positioning for optimization of the hail protector itself. So this is a, uh, what you're seeing here is a map. Uh, if you've opted in for our daily hail forecast, you'll receive this map uh, or similar looking map to this map uh, in your email on a daily basis, uh, first thing in the morning. And uh, this particular map here has um, some significant hail, um, you know, shown at different probabilities throughout uh, the central U.S. Uh, you'll see down here we've got a, a significant area um, when you see these hash marks in here. But really, even when you see the 5% uh, sort of browned area here, um, even in those areas, significant hail events are, are very common. And so you want to prepare uh, for the day uh, as if hail is going to occur uh, in these areas, uh, more so than you might prepare, let's say, in this particular case in Colorado. As we look at this slide here, of course, uh, I've got that hail forecast uh, map in the morning. And I'm going to open up as soon as I get uh, to my terminal. I'm going to go ahead and open up, uh, let's say, uh, the Weather Channel website, take a look at the radar. Uh, I might be able to see the storm developing already. Let's say in this case we saw that significant area down here in Austin. Uh, maybe there's a, a zone up in here. But it, what it does is it gives me the ability to do a weather in motion, see how it's tracking, and then drill into the storm a little more, um, maybe pick up on a city name that uh, the storm is traveling through right now, and then go to uh, load that uh, particular city into you know, in this case, the Weather Channel website, and I can get a sense of wind direction um, within the storm itself, uh, even if it's calm uh, where I'm at at that particular moment, uh, the winds that are within that storm itself are, are going to be important to keep an eye on. They may be 20, 25, 30 mile an hour, gusting to 45, you never know, but uh, having that data and taking a look at that data early in the day is going to be helpful to you as the storm develops and potentially moves through your area. Um, this photo here we've all seen before. It's uh, obviously aerodynamic testing of an automobile. What this photo uh, shows us, or what I wanted to point out, is as wind travels and comes upon an object, obviously it's going to move uh, over that object. Uh, but in this case, um, uh, obviously we see that the wind is going to also travel back down again once it gets beyond the object. Part of the reason for that is there are wind currents up uh, above that are going to create uh, resistance and push those wind currents back down again. Um, the reason why I want to show you that uh, and this photo here which shows the same aerodynamic streams uh, but shows a spoiler on the back of this car uh, which in this case um, the wind currents are pushing down on the spoiler. And cars use this in order to create more traction on their back wheels. But you can also see that the wind currents are not taking as dramatic a dip um, as they were on the vehicle without the spoiler. Well, we're going to use homes and buildings and other vehicles as spoilers. And we'll show you how. Um, so in this um, animation here, uh, we've got wind currents, let's say, are coming out of the west. This is our home, our driveway. And uh, this is a pretty easy setup because as the western winds approach the house, well, of course, the house is taller than our vehicle. We're going to park the vehicle on the other side of the house, obviously, in the driveway um, and parallel to the, to the house itself uh, is going to be the best scenario. Um, you might say, well, isn't there a garage right here? Well, yeah, but um, there may be three cars in this family, uh, whereas two of them are in the, in the garage. Uh, there may be a garage that's half full of stuff uh, or full, you know, uh, completely full of stuff, uh, which keeps people from parking their vehicles inside the garage. Um, and so, again, these western winds are going to be blocked by the house. Uh, if we had a southwesterly wind, uh, we're going to move that car as far, further or as far away from the prevailing wind direction as we can. Again, using the house as a break of some of that prevailing wind direction. Uh, some of the prevailing winds are going to hit the house like so, bounce off, and begin to interrupt 
uh, some of the wind strength of streams uh, that are coming through this area. Again, this is going to keep uh, the hail protector performing uh, as best as possible in its optimum form. Um, and we want to put the blower assembly um, furthest away from the prevailing wind direction. We want to put the nose of the car uh, pointing into or toward the prevailing wind direction. And in this case, we've got a southerly wind. Uh, again, we park the, park the vehicle close to the house um, in order to use the house as um, a break because we're going to get some southerly winds that are going to hit the house here, bounce off, and travel uh, this direction and create a stream like so. Well, that takes some of the uh, strength out of uh, that bounce off there, takes some of the strength out of uh, the wind streams that are coming directly at the vehicle. And so anything we can do to knock, let's say, a 50, 60, 70 mile an hour wind down to 30, 40 um, is going to optimize the performance of the cover itself. Um, again, the blower assembly is in the back and the nose of the vehicle is pointed into the prevailing wind direction. Uh, this, in this case, we've got a southeasterly wind. Again, nose of the car into uh, the prevailing wind direction, blower assembly to the rear. And again, we're using the house uh, to help um, guide those wind currents above the car um, and keep uh, the wind currents from, once they travel over uh, the hail protector, not putting downforce on the back of the hail protector and creating uh, more movement in the, in the hail protector than we want. And not that it's going to damage your car, but we want the cover itself to uh, operate uh, optimally. Hail is going to fall, you know, direct straight down or at a at an angle depending on the size of uh, the hailstone and the strength of the wind um, we are merely concerned about keeping the hail protector as uniform as possible in its inflation and that using homes helps to accomplish that uh, this is a easterly wind of course and in this case like i say um, we're putting the nose of the car into the prevailing wind direction blower assembly to the rear and as those wind currents travel over the you know aerodynamically designed hail protector uh, they're going to continue up over the house and again keep that downforce from occurring and creating a turbulent airflow on the other side of the hail protector. Uh, in this case a northeasterly wind again same scenario and that wind is going to be pushed up over the house and keep that turbulent action from occurring back here. Nose of the vehicle pointed towards the prevailing wind direction. Northerly wind, uh, same thing, keeping the car uh, close to the, the home itself. Um, again, we're going to have northerly, uh, that northern wind coming down here, hitting the house, bouncing off, and creating an airstream that's going to take some of the gusty uh, strength out of these direct uh, you know, uh, winds that um, are facing right at the hail protector itself and knocking some of that strength down, keeping the uniform shape of the cover on top of the vehicle. So here we have a, a northwesterly uh, wind direction and we're going to park uh, the vehicle so that it's furthest away. Again, winds are going to hit the house here, either travel over the house or bounce off and take some of the uh, strength out of any wind currents that come through like so, keeping that uniform shape of the hail protector, um, giving it its um, best uh, form to keep hailstones from impacting the vehicle itself. Uh, of course, we see a community here. In subdivisions like this, let's say these homes are you know, roughly 35, 40 feet tall, uh, the wind currents are going to be strongest when they get 20 or 30 feet above the homes themselves. So in this case, uh, we've got a lot of homes working together to knock down that wind from a gusty 60, 70 miles an hour. Um, so as we park our vehicle in our driveway, uh, in this case, um, we still want to be conscious of the you know turbulent and gusty airflow. So we want to park in the same fashion, keeping you know an eye out for what the prevailing wind direction is. Uh, but in a subdivision like this. It's very difficult for those 60, 70 mile, uh, mile an hour wind gusts to happen at ground level uh, when all these homes are, are 
blocking and, and interrupting that prevailing wind direction. Um, of course, this is a uh, parking lot. Uh, let's say we're working in this building here. Let's say the uh, air currents or prevailing wind direction is coming out of the southeast. We're going to use this building and park our vehicle in this area, and that's going to knock down that wind uh, velocity. Uh, if it's 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, it's going to knock it down, you know, by tens of tens of miles per hour. Uh, you know, 30, 40, 50 is a whole lot better than 60, 70, 80. And so we're going to put our vehicle right here with our hail protector on it, and it's going to keep its form as best as possible. Um, again, keeping the hailstones from impacting the vehicle. If uh, wind currents were coming from this direction, uh, west, uh, parking our vehicle on this side of that building is going to be best. Uh, we might not have a choice, though. Those areas may be full of uh, vehicles. And so, um, you know, we can use trees. We can also use a lineup of cars. Let's say this parking lot is more full. Uh, we've got, let's say, um, we've got uh, southeasterly uh, prevailing wind direction coming from this direction. We've got a lineup of vehicles there. Uh, parking our vehicle here on the opposite side um, with its hail protector on it. And we're essentially using these vehicles to interrupt um, some of that prevailing wind strength. And again, that's going to help the hail protector keep its um, keep the best form possible um, uh, to keep those hailstones from impacting the vehicle. In a more rural setting like you see here, um, going back to that an those animation slides, this is where you want to be um, that much more conscious of where the prevailing wind direction is coming from and use the building or use your home uh, as a break of that wind direction um, so that the hail protector cover maintains as much of its form as possible. It's important to note that, you know, we've tested the hail protector in winds in excess of 60 miles an hour. Um, the hail protector um, keeps its form and almost doesn't move at all. Uh, almost doesn't move at all when wind, wind currents are 20, 30 miles an hour and even when it's not parked close to a home. Because of its aerodynamic shape and the pressure inside the cover, um, it really is a very stable device even in high winds. Uh, it's when you get into 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, um, you know, you'll start to get some rocking motion if we're not parked, uh, if we're not cap you know, using the buildings around us or other vehicles in order to sort of knock down some of that uh, wind current. It's not going to damage the car, that rocking motion, but it, um, it is not the optimum uh, shape of the cover, not the optimum um, uh, air gaps on each side of the car at that point. Uh, you've got a, a movement back and forth. If there's a 60 mile an hour wind hitting the uh, cover dead on, um, you know, 60 miles an hour has a force on a six foot by six foot object of about 450 pounds. So you can sort of imagine an NFL offensive lineman running at your car. That's a lot of um, strength and mass. Um, and there's only so much physics we can overcome between $300 and $400. So we want to do what we can to knock that, that 60 mile an hour wind down to 30 or 40. And you'll see a huge improvement in the uniformity of the cover uh, in that uh, scenario. And it's really pretty easy to do, like I show you in, this, in these slides here. Uh, to use the structures around you to knock that wind current down. Uh, another scenario here, again, uh, rely on those animations to give you a good idea of what your best position is of your vehicle. Um, keeping it close to the house, even if the winds in this case are coming out of the north, uh, and we don't necessarily have the ability to park our car in the backyard, keeping the car close to the house is going to help us because those northerly wind currents are going to hit the house, bounce off, and take some of the strength out of the wind currents that are coming right at the vehicle and enabling us to keep that uniform um, fit, uh, uniform uh, air pressure around the entire vehicle. So we want to use uh, as much data as we can. Um, uh, we certainly uh, recommend uh, using websites and so forth in conjunction with uh, the hail forecasts and the alert warnings that we provide you. The hail alerts are going to give you a 30-minute, uh, well, first off, the hail forecast is going to give you, you know, hours, oftentimes hours of heads up as you go to work. Um, go ahead and install your cover if you see that you're in the zone or close to the zone. 
Um, that way you don't have to worry about it and be frantic when that storm gets close. You just have to walk to the window and press your remote control. Um, when we send you that alert, um, that, that hail alert itself is, is designed to provide you roughly a 30 minute uh, warning of hail or the potential of hail. And so in that scenario, you want to uh, go ahead and walk to the window and, and activate your cover. Um, the cover will begin protecting no matter what size the cover is uh, between two, three, four minutes. Uh, and it'll be fully active, preventing as much as softball size or even larger than softball size hailstones from damaging your vehicle uh, within five, six, as much as 10 minutes if it's uh, the SUV3 cover, which is covering the largest uh, trucks and SUVs out there. But again, we've given you that 30 minute warning plenty of time. Uh, to get the cover uh, activated as well. The larger hailstones uh, don't come right at the beginning of a hail, st a hail storm. They take time to develop because they are essentially a bunch of smaller hailstones coming together to create a larger hailstone.